everyone and welcome back to the country. A lot can happen in a week and a lot has been happening in Spanish football this week. But we're going to start first with the Champions League because Real Madrid got their ass taken apart by Manchester City. And I just want to say that maybe when Rooney was right, we should have listened to him. I can't believe when Rooney was right. But wait a minute. I like last music's intro music better. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, back on track. Well... If we're being honest, this result that happened on Tuesday, or Wednesday rather, should have happened last year, if not for some miraculous and lucky occurrences that just defied logic completely. And the other thing, I was like, this game, football is a game of fine margins, especially at the highest level in the Champions League. Last year, that Tony Cruz shot that hits the bar at 1-0 for Man City, goes in. And we have a completely different game. Yeah. But fortunately for myself this year, the margins went against Real Madrid and the better team deserved to win. And uh, that 4-0, like, again, Courtois is the only player that can really keep his head high in this kind of situation because he made that 4-0 a lot better than they should have been. <laughs> We have to ask questions about this Madrid team because, yes, can say they got beaten by the better team, but this is a poor image to give out, especially when you're the team that's been so proud that you've won the Champions League and you're the best team in Spain by a mile, and you give that sort of image. That's terrible, no? Uh, Yeah, that's not exactly, um, that's not, it's not really good. I think that I think that this game has made a lot of Madrid fans just go into overdrive and say this season has been terrible. I, I'm, I don't think it's been terrible. For first first of all, we have, they need to learn how to start respecting the couple of the race. They try called and translated the King's Cup. So yeah, the <laughs> Kings of Spain, right? That's some positivity there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're the champions, but you're the Kings. <laughs> anyway, um, well, yeah, I mean, that aside, I'll say... It's a come. It is a come down from last year. So yeah. I'll give if I'm grading this season, I'm giving it like a C plus. Yeah, that that's not like terrible, right? Yeah. But you know, Madrid fans, in fact, Barca fans are also guilty of this. They'll just be overly negative because they yeah. expect to win everything every year. But you know, I guess given the way last year went, where in the Champions League, no Madrid fan can literally say. How did we actually get through, logically? I mean, this was kind of, You had to kind of expect it, though, in yeah, my yeah, opinion. Yeah. It's just that, as much as you expect it, you're like, would they defy logic again? <laughs> but <laughs> but, but I, think, yeah. I think maybe the other results, like the results against Liverpool, the results against Chelsea. I was even going to say about those ones, I think I said it on the pod that we have to acknowledge that Liverpool and Chelsea are not Liverpool and Chelsea have last season, that they're mid-table clubs for the most part of the season. So, yeah. Man City was always going to be a different kind of ones. Yeah, it really was. But on their season to go into it, like right now they are 14 points behind Barca, they are third again. Um, I guess it's been a really difficult season because this they started so well that's what makes it such a hard come down versus mm-hmm. let's say athletic school who started really poorly and then they got really good and so maybe it's it's that sort of thing in football where the emotions matter more than the actual stats because or like how you finish how you um yeah all, all these things really um influence how things are judged at the end of the day yeah. Yeah, because it's even a similar conversation we had about Barca, given that they've done, if you look at the stats, they've done amazingly well. They'll possibly, they're on points to finish on the same points as Man City, and we're not going to call Man City's league season a failure, so why should we call Barca's league season a failure? Um, but the fact that Barca, sort of, they're sort of like stumbling, they stumble upon at the end, makes it look like it wasn't as good. And I, th- I think same thing for Madrid, because they started so well, but in the second half of the season, they've not been that team at all. In mm-hmm. fact, they will be fourth or sixth in the if we're just using the second half lead table. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's not like I said last week. It's not because they focus on the Champions League that they're 
going to be fourth or sixth in the second half of the season. Like, there's something fundamentally wrong. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, so. I feel like last season's brilliance kind of papered over some stuff. And obviously, I think losing Casemiro and he's not really been replaced that well. Tremeni, Tremeni started well, but I, I guess going with the team is kind of the team of the like. Pretty much this season is kind of falling off in the second half. Like he was, he was caught ball watching for the fourth man stick goal. He didn't really do too much in a lot of the league games he's starting. So, yeah, I feel like they, these are things Real Madrid need to sort out next year. Maybe they need to refresh in the squad a bit. Yeah. And is the answer um, Jude Bellingham, who they've been linked with so hard? <sighs> The thing with Jude Be- getting Jude Bellingham is <laughs> I struggle to see how he's going to play if Cruz and Modric are there. Because yeah. I don't see, like, I don't think rotating all three of them constantly is going to help any of, help the team get any consistency, if you know what I mean. Because yeah. regardless of how people feel of Carlos and lack of rotation, it's mostly been successful. Yeah. So... Um, yeah. It's interesting to see. Uh, I, I won't say Chris and Modric need to go or anything, but it's kind of, I, I, it's just going to be interesting because if he if he plays in a midfield tree with them, that means what are you going to do with Valverde? Will Valverde go back to the right wing, and then if Valverde goes back there, Rodrigo's development goes down the drain. So it's you know it's, it's a really tricky situation. Yeah, it really is. Who do you think needs the DM position more, Madrid or Barca? Or oh, can I add Atletico to the next two? Hmm. I'll say yes because we only have one DM in the club now, and he's actually leaving. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we need. If I'm being nice, we need two people, but one person who could do the job job of two people in the whole season is not too bad. I guess. Yeah. Yeah, that, that is true. But we, we're going to move on from that chapter. There are sadly no Spanish clubs left in the Champions League. Um, Madrid, they had another game on Sunday, which was rather eventful. It was the 100th year anniversary for Mestalla. They played against Valencia. And the game went from normal to the absurd and the controversial. But I'm going to start with in the first half because Valencia, I felt they were very good in the first half. I felt they should have been up two or three by the time halftime came around, they were so good. And I was really impressed by the youngsters of Valencia, especially Diego Lopez, who got the goal, mm-hmm. who's come in for Musa. And he, he's done a better job than Musa, if we're being honest. And Javi Guerra, too, he's been, he's been really good to watch. And he did a good job in that first half. Yeah. And like you said, Gato had to make some brilliant saves in the first half, just like Mama Daj really would make in the second half. And Valencia's youngsters have really injected an insane amount of quality and life into this team. I mean, for me, when I looked at the lineup, I'm like, it's weird they're not starting San Molino again. I know you're probably saving him for Mallorca, but <laughs> again, it's weird. But the youngsters, you know, they really did well. Also, Clivert coming in, yeah. you know, he's he's been really missed. And he's, he's not always been consistent this season, but... in. The last few months, he's shown his importance when he's fit. So, I feel like, you know, Clivert plus the youngsters there and Guerra and Diego Lopez, they're really doing a good job keeping Valencia up. Also, I think, like, Nico has come back in and he's also contributing well. Yeah, he's another player who could be, like, that DM position for Barca, but, like... Uh, I, 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 I wouldn't... I mean, I'll keep him next season as a substitute to whoever... Is the like whoever we bring in, yeah. But, but I wouldn't yeah. trust him just yet. But you're right, you're right. Like, since he's come back, he and Clybert have come back, they've taken the team to another level. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting that he went to the midfield three Baraja of Almeida, Guerra, and, and Nico, and that worked really well, especially in the first half, yeah. Yeah, and now we can move on to the second half, which can be divided into three phases. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, three before, phases. Three phases. The the madness. Uh, before the madness, like Madrid made some substitutions, and they they looked like they were going to score. They looked the more team that had 
more threats. They played with four attackers and they got closer and closer to goal. And then the Shomets incident happened and you can explain from then. Okay. Why do I have to do it? <laughs> anyway, anyway. So, so it, like when a previous play ends and, events, and someone throws a ball into the pitch, right? And Real Madrid bring the attack back into Valencia's house. Uh, penalty area and the ball is the extra ball is still there so Chomet is like you know what I'll be smart about this I'll just kick it out and if it hits Vinny so be it and then you know from there uh, you know every, like it's basically Real Madrid players are probably asking for more than a yellow card but I think it's a yellow card I'm just interested in what the penalty would have been if Vinny was in the penalty box when he did that yeah. Oh, would it be a penalty or indirect free kick? I don't really know. But anyway, um, after that, you know, <laughs> um, yeah, we saw some really ugly scenes, scenes that you really don't want to see in football. And we'd rather not talk about them. But, you know, Vinny pointed out a couple of fans who called him some racist insults. And um, at least the referee, I thought Debergos Bengoche actually handled the situation as well as he could because he tried to, he like informed some Divancia spokesman that, hey, this is what Vinny saw. He even asked Vinny, like, do you want to continue? Personally, I feel they could have just stopped the game completely if it was getting that bad. But he, he asked if they could continue. He said they can continue. Um, even Valencia's PA even said they any more racist insults and I'm, I'm well done to Valencia for in the aftermath dealing with the two people that were arrested because it, it wasn't the whole stadium ch- chanting whatever they were chanting they were yes they were insulting Vinicius but the insults were fairly legal and I would argue deserved but not the racist ones obviously so yeah uh, I, I think We've covered everything. Let's move on. <laughs> yeah, let's move on to the third and honestly best part of it, this whole team. So, yeah, the third phase, like that that incident, and thank you, you summed it up really nicely. That incident lasted about 10 or so minutes. And, yeah. and you're right, it was like it, they followed protocol and protocol was established. And after that, <laughs> we got a mountain of at a time. It's like yeah. the worst time I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, my man, that really was just making saves left, right. Like this guy, this guy has single-handedly kept Valencia up this season. <laughs> there I, can I, be... I, I don't want to imagine if Valencia had to keep it like Mano no right now. Oh God, you'd you be beyond, you'd be below. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. So this one, like the other one. Yeah. No one, no matter what anyone does, you shouldn't be racially insulted. But yeah. this one, I don't really have any sympathy for Vinny because you know, Musa, like really guys already gotten the ball from Yunus Musa and then Vinny pushes him down. I'm sure it's frustration from the earlier incident. So that's why I'm like, the referee had a hard decision when it comes to sending off a bit. But yeah. I think even, I talked to my brothers who are Madrid fans and even they told me he deserved to go for that last one. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Hugo Duro, like everyone's just dragging, trying to separate Vinny and Marada. Really, Vinny slaps his former teammate, <laughs> and then you know they get the red card. Now, I see a lot of people doctoring images of like, oh, yeah. Hugo Duro was, ho-. I'm Tricking like, him. yeah, I'm like, no, that's like yeah. the lack of information is so scary these days. It's not just in football, it's just <laughs> everywhere. I, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole, but it's just like. Watch the full video, you anyway. Yeah. So, yeah, Vinny, you know, got the red card that honestly he could have, he should have gotten in other games this season for the scent. But the backdrop of getting the red card, you know, he's like telling the Valencia fans, I hope you go down to the second division. I mean, it's not that's unsavory scenes all around. I mean, the fight part was entertaining, <laughs> but. All around, it's what it wasn't a good look for any. It's not a good look uh, for. I mean, it's not. I mean that this last bit because again we have to. We can divide. Everyone should agree. We can divide what happened in minute six, seventy six from what happened in minute one hundred and three. Yeah, as two different things. Yeah. Maybe with a slight caveat of 
boiling up rage or anything, but you know the club. I mean, Vinny is a very good player, but his attitude has been terrible sometimes this season. I was looking for a, a kind way to say it. He's been terrible sometimes, like picking fights with players, like. But again, in case anyone is confused or wants to be confused, I'm not justifying racism. Like. I'm just talking about the other insults, like the other, like saying Tonto or whatever. Like those are racial insults. So please, if you want to, if you want to, like, if you want to be problematic and think I'm justifying racism, fine. I'm not. I think I've done my best to <laughs> yeah. make it clear. So. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's it. Task. Yeah, can we talk about the best team in Spain now? <laughs> yeah. but before we go, um, this yeah. win is this win is really important for Valencia because I didn't think they'd actually pull this off in the room and are coming off a terrible yeah. week. Yeah, no, no, they even stopped Benzema from scoring against them, and Benzema scoring against Valencia for a while has been a certainty, you know. So. Yeah. At least they stopped that. With 40 points, they probably need one more win to make sure they're yeah. safe. But I'm not yeah. even sure one more win will be enough in this weird season. No, I'm not even sure. We'll, we'll talk about that with the teams that might go through resurgences. But you're right. Let's move on to the champions, Barcelona. They were in action against Real Sociedad. And this was the night of Sorloff because he he really did well. Like People criticized him when he... Barca played uh, Ross at Camp Nou for missing those chances. Mm-hmm. He still missed some chances in this game, but he was decisive. In, he didn't in really game. miss too many. Oh, yeah, he missed that one that Kubo yeah. gave him. But... Yeah, yeah Charlotte really played well in this game. And, you know, I thought Russell said as a whole played well. Despite a 10, 15 minute spell of chances we had, they created the bulk of the good chances in this game. and could have honestly scored more than two. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, yes, Barcelona's heads were somewhere else and it's like there's nothing to play for, but um, from a real social point of view, it's, they had to be motivated. They had to, like, make sure they capitalize on... They take advantage of Barcelona's states because Villarreal had won earlier. So, yeah, it's... A, and now, real social, basically, they win on... If they win this midweek and Villarreal don't pick up points, then Russo said we'll be in the Champions League for the first time in a decade. Yeah, which is crazy because, like, I think we spoke about this last podcast. They keep on qualifying for the Champions League in the 21st century with 2-3. So the first time was 0-2-0-3. The mm-hmm. second time was 12-13. And now it's 22 26 That's insane. So they better enjoy this year because <laughs> to be... 10 more years, Ten more years. Yeah. But you know yeah. something weird about yeah. this? Um, I was listening to Albert Ferrer and he's like, the last time Russo said that beats Barcelona at Camp Nou was in a similar situation where Barcelona had won the league title with four games to go. <laughs> so, yeah, history repeated itself. Yeah, it really did. And that was like 30 plus years ago. So, mm-hmm. it shows you how... And I wonder why they're so... But I, I guess you can ask the same questions for Atletico or... For other teams in Spain, like or just like Sevilla, it's like to go thirty plus years without beating Barca at Camp Nou seems like a statistical anomaly. It shouldn't happen. Should it? <laughs> yeah, but I guess Barcelona are really, really strong at home normally, so it's yeah. it's really hard for some teams. It's easier for some other teams, but it's really hard for others. Yeah. Yeah, and, and the thing, though, is, like, you look at the teams that have beaten Barcelona recently at home and start to rub salt into the ruins, but, like, you have teams like Rayo, Alaves, I think, in recent years, and Cadet. <laughs> you had to go there. <laughs> I, I did, I did. I mean, th- there's a... <laughs> anyway, let's move on. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. But, but, but to Barcelona, they did get their trophy. Um, I also have one more question with Real Sociedad. What happens next season when Sadiq is back? Because he is in training. And do you keep Soroth and um, Carlos Martinez? Or do you, or which one do you keep out of both of those strikers? I think you could... I think they ha- have room to keep three of them. If they find... like, I think 
what Russell said could do in attack is get a really good winger or because I don't know, I guess what's most likely going to happen is that they'll keep the squad as it is and hope that the youngsters like Brandon Che and Cho develop, which is not a bad team, but yeah. Um okay. I, I feel like if I Faba isn't going to be back to his best, then they could probably strengthen the but it would be like a strike a winger who can kind of play like a striker. So yeah. I think I think if that's the case, they could probably let Carlos Fernandez go and keep Solo Tansadi. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would agree with you. And they definitely have to sign a right back or left back. It's a shame they missed out on Grimal. They need to sign uh, sign both, honestly. Yeah, because that, that's the one thing that we've been crying out for, and I feel that's the one thing that will make them... But, but, they, but they gave the like, Goriko a, um, a three-year contract to the chagrin of my good research and that friend on Twitter. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it, that's really funny. But let's move on to a team that's. Well, can, but can I talk about Barcelona first? Oh, yeah, this yeah, game annoyed course. me because. Why? Why? You already won the league, man. What, what I wanted, you? like, I want. I just don't like seeing us lose. I don't care if it's a friendly game. I don't care if it's a friendly against the under 12s. I don't want us to lose. <laughs> and I felt like. Like Ter Stegen, you guys, don't you want this guy to be happy? Like you just you're just messing his with his chances. Like now. I mean, I believe we're capable of keeping three clean sheets so he could tie with Peter Check. And at least you would hope he breaks the La Liga record that all black had. So yeah. like please let this guy enjoy the rest of the season and create yeah. chances for and I, I just want to see us play well, you know. Even the players were upset and they were like, oh, the, re- the, I, the players are just pissed off at a lot of things, especially their, their own performances. So, yeah, I think these last three games, they should just take it seriously. And I'm glad that Xavi made them get back to training immediately. So, <laughs> that was good. Like, yeah, just, good. you know, work, work hard and try and get finish the mini objectives because you've gotten the main objective. I'm happy about that. Happy to see everyone celebrate, but you know, and one more thing. Zubi Mendy's Instagram post. (laughs) (laughs) To play, to post it in Camp Nou, in a picture of Sergi Busquets, uh, you know what I need to tell you. <laughs> I know, I know. But, yeah. but Emmanuel has said that he's going to stay for one more year. So. Sure, sure. Until Barca Lever <laughs> come up with the body. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you guys should focus on Rex String, Gavi, and Naraho. And, and that, 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 that won't be too... I mean, Busquets is leaving. That won't be too hard. And then I think Griezmann and PK stuff and others are people stuff will be off the book. The pie will be off the books. It, it's just the accounting is really weird, man. I thought yeah. those who understand it's more power to them, but you know, yeah, Zubi will come to camp now at some point and I'll be there no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> they're, gonna, they're like, uh, who sold the house? You're like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> who sold the house? Yeah, and a few, a few notes on Barca though. Like, this is the penultimate game before they move away from the camp news, so. Mm-hmm. It'll be interesting to see how they actually perform in the last game, whether they like go full petal at the camp. And so I think they will because to discuss last game too. So I think yeah, everyone they'll put up a better draft than what they did yesterday. Yeah. But right. did he did he hear what the fans said considering Barca's next game? Real bad. What did they say? They were like in Pusella, you can't feel. Do you know? Do you know the hidden meaning behind that noise? No, no, no. No, so the fans are basically telling Barcelona to throw the game because a certain Espanol are in the relegation fight. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I, I, I think, I think the records for Lewy and um, Testing are more important than Espanols. <laughs> I mean, yeah. if you look at Espanol, are a free four points every season, yeah. possibly six sometimes. So why? <laughs> Why go out of, like, we should be hoping Cadiz or something go down. Yeah, the problems. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, let's, let's move on to the, normally the high-key game of the weekend, if not for the other madness we had in the other games. 
but the Seville Derby happened, and this was a more decaffeinated Seville Derby. I'm not sure whether it was decaffeinated because of what happened, and then maybe it affected players or whatever. And but Mandilaba. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what, why this game was the way it was. Why? They're two culprits. <laughs> <laughs> Rafa Mir and Borja Iglesias. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, Rafa Mir, we I've talked at length about Rafa Mir's deficiency, so I'm not going to kill, kill him this week. But Borja Iglesias, sometimes watching this guy makes me want to cry. <laughs> like, no, I'm not, I'm not really a fan of like big target men center for that. They're not so aesthetically pleasing, but as long as you score and make good decisions, you know, I don't like yeah. well, that, that, that's what you're paid to do. But when you're not doing that, it's like, why isn't one me or someone else starting over you at this point? Well, was last year just a fluke in, in that case? Because last year it was really good and it was like linked to a last coming trade before. I, I, I think last year he had the advantage of playing with one me a lot. Um, one me has been injured this year, so I think that's taken away from his game. And also, uh, Fakir was not was absent for yeah. large parts of the season. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you know, you can't make so many excuses for someone. You have to look at your own performances. So. I feel he could do a lot better next year. Yeah, he could. Like the one, I guess the one major incident was the tackle from Juan Miranda. Do you see that? That was like. Yeah, I saw it. That's it, right? I mean, of course, betters can't, betters can't help themselves when it comes to <laughs> red cards. Yeah, and, and it was nice that Joaquin went over to go see Navas and he played the peacemaker in his last mm-hmm. journey. Yeah. Yeah. And he's he's getting closer to equaling uh, Zubiza. Zubiza he, right. he won't be able to equal it anymore, right? He, I don't think I, he. I don't think he can. Yeah. I'm, if I if I'm wrong, I'm happy to be wrong, but I don't think yeah. he can. Yeah, because what I the impression I got is that he couldn't um, surpass it, but he could equal it. But I I could be wrong. So yeah. yeah. But let's talk more about Sevilla and their performance this week in Europe because mm-hmm. they were I felt that they were really electric in that game against Juventus. Yeah, the atmosphere was perfect. And they, they played really well. Juve played well as well and mm-hmm. that was what made it such a good game. Yeah, but as well as Juve played, I mean Juve fans won't agree that they played well but I thought Juve were really good on the counter-attack and had some good chances they made. But Sevilla was so dominant at times like what? Let me check the corner count. The corner <laughs> count was insane. Like, Bono made some really good saves, but Chesney was by far the busier goalkeeper. And, hold on, where is this? I know at some point it was 17 corners that Sevilla had, but yeah. let me just check. So, where are kids? Um, Statistics. 18 corner kicks tonight. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's just insane. Like, so, like, you just shows you how much pressure Sevilla puts on them. I like, you know, Sevilla in the Europa League are a different monster. And Sevilla at home in the Europa League, they're like, we don't care if you're in the top four in another league. Like, you know, we're, we're going to humble you, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they definitely need to do that. But I, I feel with the crosses they made, maybe... It it's, wasn't that effective, in my opinion, because Juventus are they're a different team from Manchester United, and they have lots of tall, yeah, um, tall defenders, and they were able to do quite well with it. And but saying all that, it makes I feel I'll feel silly if someone points out that the their goal was from a cross, <laughs> but it was somewhat of a shorter cross. Yeah, the, you need to be like with crossing, lots of teams and even Barca on occasion. Just hit and hope. Like you need to be accurate. You need to be precise. Like it also helps if you like just have a different options because everyone bunching up in the same place isn't really helpful, you know. So yeah. So and, that that and, that last play that Lamela scored from was a smarter way of doing it. It really was, and it's it's nice to see a player like Brian Hill having confidence playing under Mandela and. What about Mandilaba? This is like he said that this result was a big win for teams, who, uh, for coaches who have coached small teams. And mm-hmm. last year he was getting sacked at Alaves. The year before, Eibar got relegated under his watch, and now he's in a Europa League final against Jose Mourinho. Yeah, it's like 
I hope this really like sparks some sort of revolution in Spanish football where like lots of coaches get opportunities at jobs that they wouldn't normally get and that they actually use those opportunities to be more play more front foot football aggressive football like Sevilla are playing because they're really like taking the games to bigger teams. Even last week in Turin, up until some parts of the second half, they absolutely dominated Juve as well. So yeah. it's not just like a home or a away team. Like um, Mendelbar's ideology is really something that Sevilla are applying generally. And Nada has done what he's done. Do you keep him? It's, hard, it's, it's getting harder to say no. Yeah. <laughs> or find any reasons why not to keep him, but I mean, why not? Like, just yeah. it, it, like it, unless you you're convinced that whoever you're going to get is overwhelmingly better for your project. I don't see why you should get rid of him. You know? Like, yeah, like like I feel unless they have like a strong like coach from the Bundesliga or, but even then they, there might be language barriers and, and all mm-hmm. these things. So unless Javi Alonso wouldn't be in that. Uh, Javi Alonso as a would be really nice. Yeah, it, it really will, but I, I don't think Sevilla might be able to be the kind of club that can pay more than what Bayerly because of his pain, Jack. Mm. So I, I'll say stick with him if you can get maybe in a couple of years, you can get someone like Ira or let's continue the same um, philosophy. I think that would mm-hmm. be great, but I, I do think this style of play fits Sevilla more than the possession style of play that they've yeah. tried to implement over the years. Yeah. Yeah. But. We shall move on from Sevilla and from Betis, and we're going to go to the Areal. We're talking about young managers doing really well. Um, I like Michel, and, but to this week, um, his team lost. And he lost because of Jackson, who he had a brilliant game. He really yeah, did. Jackson was electric. His scoring streak ended, but he showed like there's more teams than scoring goals. He can set them up to, you know. Right. Two assists in one game. That was crazy. And with Jackson, he was so close to going to Bournemouth for 25 million, if not for the missed medical. His release clause is 30 million. It should surely, be more. Like, surely be a real have to renew his contract. Yeah, so renew his contract because... Even if they're going to sell him for 45, I think this guy is worth 45 or 50 in mm-hmm. this market. Yeah, exactly. Like, he's, like he could be the answer long-term to the Dread Marino problems. Like, short-term, he's been an answer to them, so... Yeah. You know, like just cash. Like, if you're going to cash in, if you're going to cash in, make sure you can get the most you can get out of them. Because yeah, actually, clubs we monitoring his progress now. And they're like, wow, Bournemouth missed out on this guy. Let's go in and get a cut price deal. You know, yeah, especially like yeah, I think his record is insane. Like he's had in this month or in the past month, he's had six goals and like four assists. So. You just you're seeing a lot of growth from him, and um, I, I'm very happy with him because when he first started, a lot of people gave him stick because he was missing chances, and now he's finishing his better. His confidence is there, and he, you you saw Villarreal improve thanks to him. And the thing is, we we didn't even remember that Gerard Moreno wasn't playing, which is something yeah. that's crazy because they've gotten really important results without Gerard Moreno. And I, I think we have to give some credit to Setian there as well. And you you feel that this is the kind of team that's more complete and that's more that's more ready to do well in the league than before. Yeah, it's just I wonder if there's a way if they can fit Pino, Jared, Chukwiz and um, Jackson in the same lineup. Like Emery would have been able to do it, but he probably wouldn't have gotten the best out of Chukwesi or Pino like yeah. Setien is doing. So I'll give Setien credit here. Yeah, I, I think maybe he can play Gerard, Gerard as like the 10. Yeah. And maybe that's how you do it. And Pino and and Chukwesi floats behind Jackson. Yeah. But that that would be a fun sight to see. And hopefully they do that against Cardiff. So, because that would be interesting to watch. Yeah. yeah, but for Villarreal, the sad news is that Ross's dad obviously won, and they're five points away from the Champions League. But the good news is that they're going to be in the European League next season. Athletic are seventh, and they are they sort of consolidated or got back to seventh after beating Celta Vigo. But Celta, their their form is starting to worry people. 
I'm going to say what I said last week and the week before. I still think they'll be fine. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of pushing it now because if we consider Almeria to be in trouble, then yeah, you should consider Celta because they have the same points tally. <laughs> but I mean, in this game, Iago Aspas wasn't playing, and it's a way at Simon, so it wasn't. Although it wasn't really going to be easy. Yeah. And for Athletic, yeah, it's really important that they go back to the new ways and took advantage of Sevilla and Girona. Actually, everyone in the everyone in the top seven race except Athletic lost this weekend. So <laughs> really good for them that they won. Yeah, it's really good. And another thing that's good for them is that they finally played the formation that we've been calling them to play in. Munain was there. Sunset went back to his eighth position or his sixth or deep lying attacking midfielder position. And they, they scored more goals. Williams scored in the first half and Brennan Gare scored. He went back to the la- almost the exact attacking, actually the exact attacking five that was so successful at the start of the season. Yeah. What a shock. <laughs> yeah. And the, the only team missing was Vesga down there, but. Vesca has had a really good season, so I don't know why he didn't start him in this game. But oh well. Yeah, I I think it'll be for Athletic. It'll be nice if they finish seventh because they've been doing so well. They've been in Europe for almost the entire season. But as with some fans who are saying that oh whoever finishes top they should stay there, and that's how it should be. You have to you have to maintain that that streak, mm-hmm. and that's something they haven't done. They've shown signs of. Se- several inconsistencies yeah. throughout the season and I do worry for them that maybe when they get into Europe it's really going to affect them playing Thursday and Sunday yeah it's not like they can really strengthen like that because yeah. of their policies so, you never to be know, honest if, if it's you could get a... some Polish guy with some Basque heritage in the 1600s <laughs> yeah they could have they should have probably found them by now but <laughs> I mean, we'll have to see what's going on. But the fact that they are doing so well with their restricted players is, again, one of the really good things about the league. Yeah, it is. And Soto could do them a big favor if they beat um, if they beat Girona next uh, this coming week. This coming week, but Atleti did them a huge favor against Asasuna. Atleti, they're they are they are back to second. They played really well against Asasuna. Correa gets in a brace. Uh, Griezmann gets in another assist, and even Rodrigo de Paul is getting a, an assist these days. He's been he's improved. He's one of those um, players for Atleti that they've gone from less to more this season. Him and Molina. I'll say more Molina, less so de Paul. De Paul, I mean. He's been all right, but like Molina has been really, really good since the World Cup. Yeah, I I won't, I won't put them in the same category. <laughs> True. Yeah, True. Right. And, and scratch that. I said Korea got a brace. That's wrong. Saul got a goal and Korea yeah. scored as well. Yeah, yeah Saul so, so, so is the new Osasuna man because he's played <laughs> against them at the uh, Al Sadar. Yeah. yeah, he's <laughs> taking yeah. over the mantle <laughs> from Felix. Yeah. And with us sooner, the next game is against Athletic, the repeat of the Copa del Rey semi final, which, which will be interesting for them. Mm. Normally, the team that loses the Cup semi final, they normally get revenge, right? So, yeah. That trade up. That, that, that wasn't the. Anyway, it should be an interesting game, I wonder. And, and it's going to be at. Um, yeah, it's going yeah, to be yeah, at Yeah, yeah. yeah it, it should be interesting, man. They're I'm both fighting for the same. They're both fighting for the same team. Let's see who comes out on top this time. Yeah, I, I think that's the that will be the key things for the league coming forward is that there are lots of like key matches, key matchups between relegation threatened teams and teams fighting for seven. So yeah, let's. Yeah, see. I, I just want to see, yeah. The, if I remember, their first game this season was a terrible nil nil at San Mamés. So yeah, you know, um, whoever wins this game will have the head to head advantage. So that should that will also be really key in the fight for seven days. Yeah, it sounds like a zero zero happening all over again. <laughs> uh, I think they all they, they have, with something to play for they produce goals two sure. times already. So hopefully they can score a bit. Yeah. 
Yeah, we'll see about that. But the fact that Osasuna couldn't score against Gearbridge is <laughs> it's not a good look. It's not a good sign. <laughs> It's a good sign. A team with definitely something to play for is Espanyol, and they beat Rayo Vallecano. They're the first uh, Catalan team, if I'm wrong, if I'm not wrong, to beat Rayo Vallecano in La Liga since Rayo got promoted recently. Uh, yeah, there. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe that's a good sign for us next season. Maybe <laughs> we'll finally beat those Madrid. That's yeah. good, man. Let me keep my mouth shut. <laughs> 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 I, hey, but. Real Madrid is not the only Real Madrid team I hate, so that's something, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're, we're going to talk about another, I think we've talked about, you. I think he hates all the Madrid teams, so we'll just say it like that. I, I mean, I don't, I don't, very I, I kind of like it, I kind of like the Taffy ones who now started scoring. Yeah. So I, I hate them, I dislike them the least. Athletes, it, it depends on my, it depends on how I feel that day. <laughs> sometimes I like them, sometimes. There are fans I definitely hate too, no question. <laughs> uh, except the, the, Tyler. Yeah, okay, so we're talking about international fans. Yeah. yeah. And the international fans are good. Yeah. For the most part. But anyway. Um, yeah, back to Espanol. Yeah. Uh, th- this this result is massive for them because I thought like they were gone and this is the kind of result that can boost the season. But the the sad thing for them is the next is Atletico Madrid. So um do you, what chances do you give Espanyol staying up? Because they do have the points to stay up compared to Catafi, Varda lead. Mm. The athletic game is at RCD, right? Yes, it is. Yeah. Well, for me, I think last week, even though I was expecting them to get too much on Raya, like, they need to get to that last match day against Almeria alive somehow. <laughs> And then from there, just all or not to win that game. But they've given themselves a better chance now. With, can we really say it's in their hands? It, it's not really in their hands, per se. No, but, it's not in their hands, but I, I feel... But like... Hetafi and River, do they have to play each other, right? Yes, they do. In that case, it's probably in their hands if they win all their games. Because if they win all their games... Well, I mean, they have a good, they have a better chance of staying up now that they literally they Almeria and Valencia are the only ones to pick up points this week. So yeah, yeah, the, their chances are much better. And I think if like no, Jackson, I'll say the last game they're they're definitely going to get three points. So because Almeria are absolutely terrible, <laughs> we live from home. And uh, the last, if they can pick up a win against Atletico Madrid. And which is not I, I which, which is not likely. likely. Which is not likely, but where do things have happened? Elche have beaten Atletico. Yeah, Mala, yeah, they definitely have to get beat Valencia too. Yeah, that that would be it. But that might not be too bad for Valencia then because if they win I strongly believe if they beat where are they playing actually? Mallorca. If they beat Mallorca somehow then they'll be fine. Yeah. So that, I, I feel if Valencia beats Mallorca, would be they'll be pretty much safe because there's so many teams playing against each other. Mm-hmm. I think Vidali, they have to play um, Ketafe, Ketafe, they have to play Barcelona, they have to play Almeria. So it's, yeah, that, that Mallorca game is highly important. Yeah, they need to win that one. If, yeah. if, if we're going to count Mallorca as safe, then we'll count Valencia as safe if they win that game. Yeah. I, I think so too. Uh, let's move on to actually speaking of Mallorca, they got torn apart by Lazaro and uh, Maria. They're they're very close to safety. Ruby, had, he had to go at his critics after this game, saying that like they didn't believe in him when they had some issues, and he hoped that Cadiz and Maria stay up because it would be a good sign for clubs that keep faith in their coaches. Okay, that's not a bad sentiment to have. I disagree with him on Cadiz staying up, but it's a it's a nice it's a nice sentiment, honestly. Because if you look back at a lot of relegations, I feel like if they have given some coaches some time, like they have yeah. probably done better. Like I feel like with Alaves, if they gave if they, they weren't so seesaw and after my chin. Of course, the la- next coach they had, the coach they had after matching was actually white coach. I don't really remember his name that much. Yeah. yeah, but thing though with uh, that Alaves relegation though, it was always coming. 
Yeah, I, was, I mean, they were playing with it so much that I was going yeah, to pass yeah. up. But there are times where I feel you need to keep facing people. Like Wesker now. Wesker could have kept facing Michelle. Yeah. yeah Michelle. But that didn't happen. And then... I, mean, I think if Celta kept facing Carl, they, they could have been fine too. I mean, I still think they're fine now, even yeah. though their form is just no diving. But yeah, I think the problem with Celta and Cardet is that um, this no. guy come in, Luis Campos comes in, and he doesn't really want Eduardo Cardet. He wants to have um, maybe a different sort of player, more continental manager like. Um, Carlos Carvajal, so that's mm. that was the issue. But let, let's let's move on back to Maria with Lazaro. Did you expect this coming? No, like I he he scored a really good goal against um, Osasuna, Osasuna last week, yeah. but I had trick at the age of twenty two. That's incredible, and you know more power to him. Like looking into his backstory of how he's played well in the Brazilian leagues and the Copa Libertadores, like. You know, this guy is definitely on the right track to get him climbing higher up the football pyramid. And, you know, if his goals keep Almeria up, then that's good for his future too. And Almeria, obviously, because they he can continue to develop there. And they're also developing. It's not just him. They're really... They're, their project is really nice. And I'd like them to stay up because yeah. we can see players like this just explode, you know. Yeah, and there's like your dad Ramazani, they had like Kalki, who we saw, but we, 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 we yeah, Ka- Kalki, Kalki. <laughs> we all expected so much from this guy, yeah. no, and no one remembers him again. Yeah, Once yeah. Ruby dished the back five, that was it. That was it, or Bilal Tere, too. Like, he, uh, Bilal Tere, I'm surprised he, he can't get he, he actually his goals were really important for yeah, him. Yeah, he, he, he got he got injured, and that's yeah. why we haven't seen him. Mm-hmm. But it, maybe in the future, there might be a race of who's the better Vinicius between Junior and Lazar. <laughs> uh, maybe. Maybe, yeah, because yeah, Lazar is on six, Vinicius Junior is on ten goals. Mm-hmm. But Lazar has six. When did he yeah. score his other two? Yeah, I forget. <laughs> and I forget, but they are probably in the weekends while Maria got battered. But at home, these guys, you know, they just tear everything apart. Yeah. They they have the sixth best uh, record at home, which is insane for a team like this. They just imagine if they could get their waveform on point, they will be fighting for Europe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But speaking of teams that are strong at home, Cardiff they were really strong against by the lead, and this we're getting to more of the meat and potatoes of the relegation zone here because this was a massive relegation battle, and the goal Theo Bogonda scored to open the scoring was brilliant. Yeah, it was really cracking goal. He it even hit the crossbar to make it more special. And you know, that's the kind of individual brilliance that can just save you from the relegation mire and you know, Cat is really deserved this way because they were on top of River the lead from the word go. Even after missing the penalty, they didn't keep their heads down, they just kept fighting and fighting and yeah, I think they have head-to-head advantage over River the league, and actually quite a number of people down there. So I think Cardiff should be fine. You know, right now, depend. Right now, I think Cardiff are more safe than Almeria because Almeria actually have to play against a lot of these guys, and that could go either way. Sure. So it's. Um, I think Cardiff have done themselves, giving themselves a huge chance. I, I even forgot that they won this weekend, my bad. Because <laughs> I mentioned, I didn't mention them earlier. Yeah. Maybe it's just my hatred. Yeah, it's just the hatred. But let's look at Cardiff's <laughs> uh, games left. So they have Bietial. They have, um, which might, which seems like an L. They have Celta Vigo. Given their form, they could beat them at home. And they have Elche away from home, which... A couple weeks ago, a month ago, I would have said that was an easy win, but <laughs> okay, they've been moving funny recently. Yeah, uh, that, that's, a, that's a spooky fixture. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, but, you know, Katis' last game of the last season was against Alaves at Alaves's home when they were relegated, so it's a bit of deja vu, too. <laughs> I think, like, if it gets down to it and they're, like, still in the relegation, Mario and Magic 30, they'll probably be Telchik. Sure, they, they would. 
Yeah, if, if, like, if I think if they need the results, they'll be there. If they're if they think they're safe, but then you know results change elsewhere, then it might be a different story. Yeah, yeah, it could be. Let's talk about via the lead. They they're they're just sinking. They're, they're sinking. Like, they had they had a brief spell where you, they looked like they were running away from everyone, but since then five losses in a row. Yikes. And next yeah. up is you guys, and then they have Almeria away from home, and yeah. they play Hetafe at home in the last game. I'm so happy because Larry can start bad. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he'll start. I mean, based on this first season, I kind of seen the teams that he actually likes playing against. So even though he had a tough time on Sunday, he kind of likes playing against Real Sociedad. Just give him Pedri, you know, yeah. <laughs> to make it easier. He likes playing against LJ, they'll be gone. River, the lead. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, teams, teams that aren't too physical in defense, but will attack you a bit and give you some space. Those are any good strikers, bread and butter. So, you know, let's River, the lead tighten up. And even if they do tighten up the defense, they have Masip, who we need to talk. We, I need to talk about him because. He's done things that are even more criminal than Pepe Red. <laughs> <laughs> but like, he, if you're looking at the people who saved Valencia, he's one of the people who saved Valencia. Yeah, he's one of the people that saved them. <laughs> because that, goal, that equalizing goal from their cap, like, that's as bad as Pique's tranquil. <laughs> <laughs> so those things, right, I couldn't believe it, but it's like, it was, it was magic. It's one of those moments where I would look, I would look at, if Valencia do stay up, I'll look at and I'm like, yeah, this is, this, this is was what's <laughs> uh, And then after, after Barcelona, they have to go to Maria, who we just discussed, they're very good at home, and then Hetafe, or Jose Bordelas is Hetafe at the end. Yeah. It's not looking good. It's not looking good. No, no. Yeah. Definitely one of Hetafe or River that are going down. I, I don't see either of them staying up. <laughs> I mean, we'll talk about the toughest problems. Yeah, well, yeah, well, why, well, yeah. Why not talk about them now? Because they, Elche, they were their party poopers against the Tafe. They couldn't be relegated to Elche, and Elche is becoming <laughs> a tricky fixture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think after Elche beat up Elche, I'm like, you know what? This this might actually be more difficult for teams that it it seems because there's this freedom now, and honestly, I feel this evil like. Why bring others down with you? Like, <laughs> it's, it's wicked this man. Yeah. Because even uh, they beat Mallorca in March, they drew it by the <laughs> Like, all, and it, because LG have been so far away, and like, some of the points they are like, did you really, did those three points you took from Villarreal, did you really need to take them? <laughs> I mean, we have to, that, that one is more, that one is obviously Villarreal's fault. This is a joke, but like, yeah. Just like the allocation of points could have been better. <laughs> yeah, it could have been better, especially when you consider that it's happening there at home, you expect them to win. And it's like as if Elche is playing in front of their home crowd and they're going for better assets. But, mm-hmm. well, but what about Hetafe? Yeah, they can't start to save their lives right now. And next game for them is Real Betis. Then they have Osasuna and then Valladolid. This doesn't look like easy fixtures for, for yeah. that. To be honest, I think Hatafi are in a case where they'll probably go into match the 38th needing the win to really? stay up. I, I know actually looking at this, I'm I, I'm starting to get the feeling that if Valencia get a point from Mallorca, they'll be safe on the last match day. Yeah, given some of the matchups too. Yeah, I I, I, I guess because the reason I'm saying that is because Valencia have the head to head with Hatafi. They have yeah. a goal differential with Vidalid. Vidalid are playing against Barcelona. Hetafe is playing against Real Betis, but they can get a point against Real Betis, if I'm being honest. There's, a, there's an argument to me that Espanyol might actually be safe and Hetafe and Vidalid go down. Yeah, that... I mean... I, I, I think it's kind of weird that I actually don't want Espanyol to go down. Yeah. I didn't want them to go down to some of Darder's comments. Then I'm like, okay, <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> but I think I'd rather have Espanol than 
Gada vs Fayada and Cadiz, but Cadiz don't want to go down. To... Uh, <laughs> uh, what are we going to do? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, and and when I take a look at Cadiz's fixtures, I, I do think there's a chance, there's a slight chance, but I don't know. Uh, it's that that Cardiff is definitely have easier fixtures on paper than Hetafi and Robert really, but yeah. That Elche one <laughs> they need to be safe before they meet Elche because Elche will be monsters in that, <laughs> that last game. Yeah, because the last time in the Premier I did Oh and that oh and yeah, the drama from the reverse fixture. Oh uh, yeah. That's yeah. going to be fun. Oh my god. <laughs> I mean his last day of the season, multi cam will be there no matter what. So. <laughs> I was like, oh, honestly, this season has been too long. So much controversy. I almost forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. Like, if Cadiz end up going down by, and those extra two points could have saved them, man, hell is going to break loose. <laughs> yeah, it really is. It really is. Uh, yeah, I, th- I think we've done all the La Liga club. So let's do let's do a bit of a European roundup. We haven't done it in a while. Like, congrats to Roma. Obviously, we spoke about them. And they're going to play against Sevilla in the final. But, boy, do you see that stat with um, Bayer Leverkusen and Roma? Yeah, I, I posted it on my story. I'm like, there's no way this... I mean, I know Mourinho is a terrorist, but there's no way he's still doing all of this. Like, I thought he's changed. <laughs> Yeah, so we are going to have it real, but especially without Acuna for the final. I don't know if they can overturn that ban somehow, but yeah. highly unlikely. So, I, yeah. I, that, I guess that means like stairs will be seen a lot of game time. <laughs> that doesn't sound like a good a good thing. I mean, uh, at, he's going. He's most likely going to play, so you might as yeah. well warm him up. You know? Yeah, that that is true. That is true. Uh, or okay. you could you could actually play Reki at left back that day and bring Teles on as a, as an impact so True. I thought yeah. that would be wise that would be wiser use of your team. Yeah. Or maybe this I'm not sure how this could work, but it could play Montiel as a left back. Uh, it's really Yeah. I, I like we saw Baldi this weekend. Like if you're playing as a right back out of position against a good enough team, you're going to struggle. True. So. That is true. Yeah, but that, that, that seems like it's going to be a really tough game for Sevilla. We'll talk about it more next week because the final is in 10 days or nine days, I might, mm-hmm. add, I might add. And the Champions League, we always have to congratulate Man City on going through. They won Premier League this weekend, so congrats to them. Five in six years. Yeah, but you know the funny thing about that? Like, Man City won the league because my United lost to... West Brom in 2018. They didn't, they like were watching it at home, but like in their own individual homes. If you watch the um, City documentary, you'd see that. But for Arsenal, they not only watched it at home, they all gathered to watch it together <laughs> because that's how little faith they have in Arsenal as an institution. Like, <laughs> that is just disrespectful. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but at least um, for Arsenal's sake, they are going to be in the Champions League next season. It seems like they'll be joined by Manchester United and Newcastle. So, yeah, they'll definitely be joined by United and Newcastle because Liverpool drew against Villa, so they yeah. they don't even, they can't even depend on United messing up. So yeah. that's like um, that, that's the top first title. Yeah, and the the league titles and the yet settled in. League A, but it does look like Lens are going to be the second place team. But the league will be set up possibly next week by PSG. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, in Serie A, we already know Napoli are champions. Um, all the matters now is the top four. Juventus, though, that they might put a spinner in the top four works because so minus rumors. twelve points. Yeah, and to be honest, I don't like this chaotic thing. With yeah, it's really it's really stupid because it's like why give them back the points in the first place. Yeah. I feel like if you didn't give them back the points, they would have probably made more of a fight in the Europa League because that's their avenue to get each other. Like, it feels like, I mean, Italian fans are going to be like, why do you deserve my sympathy? But I'm like, you know, like, it's just chaotic, man. Like, ev- everyone deserves at least some clarity. You know? Yeah. I'll rather if they had done this um, in the summer, this summer. <laughs> And they give they gave Juve enough chance, or they they or they said that okay, we're going to remove twelve points from you for next season. Yeah, that makes more sense. And at least Juve have enough chance to exhaust their appeals throughout mm-hmm. the summer, 
and they know where they're starting from. Yeah. But this this just feels chaotic because Juve can still appeal it, and then it leads to something, some chaos mm-hmm. going into next season. But we're going to end with the Bundesliga, which is surprisingly the most ent- entertaining league in the world at the moment. Bayern Munich, <laughs> they lost to Leipzig. And um, that gave Borussia Dortmund the opportunity to not mess it up this time and actually go to the top of the table. Yeah, so it all comes down to the final match. <laughs> uh, Are you going to be there? Uh, I mean, I, I, stopped to, I stopped using the SPM Plus, so I, unfortunately I won't be there. <laughs> <laughs> unless I, un, unless I, someone is kind enough to give me their login details. But, yeah, I can be kind enough to do that. Oh, uh, that that would be nice because I I, would, I wouldn't want to pirate. I I literally wouldn't want to pirate because viruses. I want one. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it's be interesting to see what how like everything goes on. And honestly, if Dortmund win, I'm go- I'm probably going to be the only person who's not happy about it because, <laughs> because that means we will get Bayern. We can get Bayern in another Champions League group stage again. And while I do think we can beat Bayern the way they are now. Like I, yeah. I want to play a different team. I'm, yeah. ty- I'm tired of facing Bayern or Inter. The same way Real Madrid is probably tired of facing English teams. So <laughs> I change it up. You, you Stop fixing the games. Yeah, I'm telling you, it's going to be Barcelona, Bayern, Inter, Newcastle. <laughs> no, Inter will win the Champions League. Don't worry. Yeah. Oh, yeah, true. For real talk about them. Like They're in the Champions League final. Congrats to them. Yeah. Yeah, but coming back here, it's Dortmund. They're playing against Mainz at home, and for sure, Dortmund, they're monsters at home this season. Uh, the fact that they're, man, it's still Dortmund. We, like, this is a team that lost to Chelsea for crying out loud. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, the, ba- the banter, I mean, Prem fans are whatever, but the banter, I can't, like, I have to, I'm going to have to laugh at this one. <laughs> But the thing though with Dortmund is they've won all their home games. All of them. Since the start. Of- that's why they're going to that's one more reason why they're going to lose on Sunday. <laughs> because it's Dortmund. <laughs> they're always going. Oh, Arbor, it doesn't, listen, it doesn't I'm not vouching for Dortmund ever again. So okay, yeah. what to make make of that what you will. I, I put my I, I put my head on the line with Dortmund <laughs> and Couple yeah. of several weeks ago, and I it said, was it was nice knowing your head, man. <laughs> I know, no, no. We'll be but... talking to headless touch next week. <laughs> I, I was confident in this team doing it. Um, maybe they gave me a few scares, but luckily Bayern, <laughs> Bayern were worse. So <laughs> it's just weird seeing Bayern this way. Like, what happened to them? They used to be this all-conquering team, and now they're mm-hmm. losing to Leipzig. They're like dropping points all over the. They're, you know, they're, they're, like the first crime. And the first sign of them problems was that they were actually behind Union Berlin. <laughs> so <laughs> after that, if, okay, Leipzig. If, I'm sure if this league season was more than 34 games, Leipzig could have probably finished ahead of Bayern. Yeah, is is this is this a worrying issue for them going into the next season? Like, what do they need to do to go back to being the Bayern of of all that? Just That's stay more on this again. Simple, and um, I guess the Lewandowski that your fans were. Saying he's a mercenary is not so bad after all, is it? <laughs> no, he isn't. I mean, that would be the one thing that I'll enjoy from Bayern not winning the boys to be like, ha, ah, no, no, and those kid, no, yeah. nothing for you guys. So, yeah, and, and, yeah. No, and they need a they need a they need a like a really good strike. I've seen them look to Vlahovic, I'm like, I don't think I don't know about that. I mean, you should do everything you can to get Harry Kane, in my opinion. Yeah. To prevent Real Madrid from getting it. And if Hurricane comes to Real Madrid, I won't be worried because he means no trophies for them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and uh, also the second of Julian Nagas when they really Yeah, that, that that one was that's the most stupid decision this season because yeah. you're first and on track for a treble. Why suck? Like, yeah, and, and the thing though is the argument they made is that we're scared that we might lose out on the historic opportunity. Well, and you, you did. And you, I'm a seeing, self-fulfilled prophecy. <laughs> I'm seeing Bayern pages saying that um, Thomas Tuchel is going to stay at Bayern. And I'm just like, then oh, why no. did he sack 
Julian Nagelsmann in the first place? You bring in this guy to go to win. I, I can answer that question. Why they keep two for all money is a problem, yeah. True. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, but yeah, long live Bayern's downfall as long as <laughs> I mean maybe maybe we should get them next season and finally teach them a lesson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll see about that. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure no matter what happens you'll be I'll be there. Exactly. Uh, With that note, we're going to end the podcast. Thanks for again for this wonderful competition, Oscar. Yeah, no, no problem. And we'll, we look forward to seeing you or hearing from you, the listeners, next week. And we covered everything we need to cover. Adios. Yes.